Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me for another video today. My name is Laura if you are new here and today is a start of a new series where I'm going to be taking poses and transitions and breaking them down into these mini tutorials just to give you some tips, some tricks and some drills to work on them and hopefully um, establish them better in your practice. So today's transition is crow pose to chaturanga. It's something we've been working on in my intermediate class on a Tuesday evening and it's something that lots of the people who come have asked many questions about. So today I'm going to break it down, give you some tricks and tips and little um, things to work on so that hopefully you can go away and practice this um, and achieve it. So first things first, if you are going to be working this transition, it's important um, that you have a strong crow pose and a strong chaturanga. Without a strong crow pose or chaturanga, you're not going to have much chance transitioning between the two. So go ahead, get those two nice and strong. Um, and then I recommend coming back to this video if that's not you just yet. If that's you, if you're maybe already um, working towards it or you want to finally begin to attempt it, then this is for you and I'm going to give you a few little um, ideas on drills that you can use to work towards it. So first things first is that um, I would recommend is actually not coming into crow pose at all, but coming into malasana. So starting into just a nice kind of little malasana squat. Placing the hands down in front of you, just like you would in your crow pose. So nice crow pose set up, nice strong arms, nice strong active core. And then instead of coming into crow pose, you're just going to come onto the tippy toes, bring all the weight into the hands, and then shoot the legs back into chaturanga. So instead of coming into the crow pose, you're just taking that element away to start with and just doing it from your malasana yoga squat. This gives you the sensation and the... Um, it gives you the ability to familiar, familiarize yourself with the movement of bringing the weight forwards and then sending the body backwards. So in crow pose, as I'm sure you know, you think about bringing the weight forwards. You want to keep the chin lifted slightly. The gaze goes ahead so that you're not essentially face planting the floor, which is the biggest fear when it comes to this transition, I know. So think about bringing the weight forwards, forwards, forwards so that the legs bec can become light and then you can send the legs backwards. So that's idea number one, coming to it from your malasana. Option number two is bringing the feet together, big toes touching, little bend in the knees. Bring the hands down to the ground as if you're about to come into your crow pose. Instead of going into crow pose, you're going to keep the thighs attached to the chest, core's nice and active. You're going to bring the weight forwards, 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 little bend in the elbows, come onto the tippy tip, tip toes. When everything becomes heavy in the arms, shoot the legs back and land in your chaturanga. That's another option to begin again to work the idea of moving the weight forwards so that you can shoot the legs back. Okay, number three little tip is coming into crow pose. So actually coming into crow pose this time. So setting yourself up, coming up, looking forwards, bringing the weight forwards, coming onto uh, something, coming off the floor with the feet. And then think about just bringing the weight slightly into one arm. So pressing through the other palm to bring the weight slightly into one side. And then we're going to just extend one leg back and then the other and lower down. So doing it one leg at a time first. Again, it gives you the idea on what muscles you need, how much strength you need, the sensation of sending the legs backwards whilst in crow pose. But you're going to kind of land uh, a little bit more safely if it feels uncomfortable or a little bit scary for you right now. So make sure you work that both sides. So I'll just show you that one again. I'm going to bring the weight forwards. Weight comes slightly into one arm. Shoot one leg, other leg, and you're in your chaturanga. And then, of course, you can work that each side quite a few times until you familiar familiarized yourself with it. And then you can work both legs shooting back. So I really, really uh, suggest working 
all of these drills a few times, keep going, keep working when it's cued in a class and you know you're working towards it and can't quite do the transition yet, just take one of these drills and use that in your classes. Um, another little one is from crow pose, just taking a few little hops. So from crow pose, leaning forwards, le lifting up. And then instead of shooting all the way back, just bring your feet back together. So you can try that a few times and that gives you the sensation of what it's like to leave the arms and come back. So that's another little tip that just popped into my head. Sorry, that was a bit um, chaotic. So yeah, as I was saying, work these drills, use them in your classes and you should start to feel a lot more comfortable with the sensation of shooting the legs back. Now, a lot of you who come to my classes anyway, a lot of what I've noticed is that you actually have the strength, you have your crow pose, you have your chaturanga, it's the fear. So work this with pillows in front of you, work this surrounded by duvets, make it work for you, have fun with it, and just know that it's actually not that far to jump back. And um, yeah, it's not that far to jump back. And the mental game is a lot more than the actual physical game. So just keep that in mind when you're practicing. Um, and yeah, I hope this helped. Give it a go. Let me know if it helps. Let me know um, what you're working on so I can do some other tutorials, transitions, poses, anything at all. Leave me a comment below and um, I will get them filmed for you and uploaded. But I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed this type of video, short and sweet, but hopefully it gave you something valuable to take away. And make sure you subscribed if you haven't already. I look forward to seeing you for another video again soon.